Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Microbial Comedy Club on the Infection Tube. I'm Spark, your new host, and I'm here to light up your nights with laughter. That's right, folks. From now on, I'll be your guide through all the funny moments and laugh-out-loud stories here at the club. We've got a fantastic group of microbial comedians who are ready to make you laugh until your cytoplasm shakes. <laughs> so sit back, relax, and get ready for a sparkling good time. Let's make this night one to remember. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a very special guest who has traveled all the way from the nasopharynx just to be here with us. But before we bring him out, I have a little announcement. Hmm. The head of the microbial world asked me to present our microbial comedians because their world isn't quite as advanced as ours yet. Sadly, 3D animated versions of microbes aren't available, so we'll see our cute microbe friends in their 2D versions here in the club. He's as cute as a microbe can get, so get ready for some laughter and learning, because tonight we will be entertained by the one and only Hank, the Haemophilus Influenza. Give a warm, two-dimensional welcome to Hank. Thank you. Thank you. I am here to tell you all about Hank's life. It's a wild ride. Let's break it down with the mnemonic chob ship fact. First, let's start with the basics. Hank is a small gram-negative rod. You know, like a stick with attitude. He's oxidase positive, facultatively anaerobic. That means he can survive with or without oxygen, and he doesn't need to move around much. Hank can't move around on his own. He lets the air do the traveling for him. And sometimes... After beta-lactam antibiotics, Hank here might appear as a filamentous rod in clinical samples. Now, let's talk about Hank and his family in depth. He's a bacteria with a split personality. Think of it like he comes in different flavors. Six typable strains and many non-typable ones. His typable strains have a thick polysaccharide capsule, like a superhero's shield. Serotype B, or Hib, is his star player. Hib's capsule is so tough, it can resist immune attacks and go on to cause serious trouble like meningitis and bacteremia. Talk about a bad boy. His non-typable cousins are more diverse but less dangerous, still causing annoying infections like ear infections and sinusitis. Growing up, Hank needed some special stuff, a carbon dioxide-enriched atmosphere, Hemin, Factor X, and NAD, Factor V. He loves chocolate agar. He needs it to grow because it provides the factor X and factor V he craves. <laughs> Hank spreads through respiratory droplets or direct contact with respiratory secretions. Humans are his only known reservoir, and the nasopharynx is his favorite long-term vacation spot. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Let's talk about colonization. 20% of infants in their first year and over 50% of kids by age 5. They love hanging out in the nasopharynx for months, waiting for the right moment to cause some trouble. And don't forget about the Hib vaccine. It's a game changer, significantly reducing their numbers in vaccinated areas. Colonization can last months, and during upper respiratory infections, Hank might just promote invasive disease and transmission. He can also crash at the female genital tract, causing endometritis and other problems. Hank uses adhesins to stick to the respiratory tract and impair ciliary function, causing inflammation. He also produces IgA proteases and can persist intracellularly. Hib, with its capsule, can cause invasive infections like meningitis and bacteremia. Antibodies to the Hib capsule protect against invasive disease. Newborns get some early protection from maternal antibodies and breastfeeding. Conjugate vaccines have significantly reduced Hib infections and provide herd immunity. Greatest risk for invasive Hib infection is in children under 5, 
especially with incomplete immunization. Other risk factors include asplenia, HIV infection, immunoglobulin deficiency, and certain treatments. Socioeconomic factors like crowding and daycare attendance also play a role. Now, for our clinical manifestations. Encapsulated strains like Hib can cause meningitis, bacteremia, and epiglottitis. Really serious stuff. Non-typable strains usually stick to causing sinusitis, auditus media, and COPD exacerbations, but can occasionally go rogue and cause invasive diseases. Diagnosis for most respiratory infections is clinical, but invasive diseases are confirmed by culture or PCR. Preferred treatment includes beta-lactam antibiotics like amoxicillin, amoxicillin clavulinate, and cephalosporins. For severe infections, we use intravenous third-generation cephalosporins due to potential ampicillin resistance. And other antibiotics like fluoroquinolones, tetracyclines, and carbapenems also work against Hank. So there you have it, folks. The life and times of Haemophilus influenzae, straight from Hank himself. Remember the mnemonic Chob ship fact to keep all these details in mind. C. Capsule. Typable strains have a capsule. Hib is the most virulent. H. Humans. Only known reservoir. O. Oxidase positive. Key characteristic. B. Biofilms. Formed by H. Influenzae. S. Serotypes. Typable and non-typable strains. H. Hib vaccine. Reduces invasive disease. I. IgA protein. Helps in immune invasion. P. Polysaccharide capsule. Hib's virulent factor. F. Facultatively anaerobic. Can grow with or without oxygen. A. Addison's. Aid in colonization. C. Chocolate agar. Needed for growth. T. Transmission. Respiratory droplets. <laughs> Remember, folks, Hank may be small, but he packs a punch. Keep those vaccines up to date, wash your hands, and maybe he won't crash your next party. Thanks for having Hank, and stay healthy. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Infection Tube for more microbial comedy and educational content. And hey, if you enjoyed tonight's show, make some noise for Hank, and let us know in the comments who you'd like to see next. Follow <laughs>